How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that's been a quarter of a century now. I've been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close friends say, if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have now written over 130 articles and recorded over 30 hours of VMware vSphere 7 and 8 videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Expert Exchange awards over the last 11 years working with the Expert Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program since 2011 and I'm currently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last four years. Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Welcome back. And in this video, we're going to have a little look at recovering an ESXi root password. Um, but we're not really going to recover the ESXi root password. We're going to follow the supported method. If you happen to have lost your ESXi, ESXi root password, you cannot log in. Um, it's not responding to the password that you've documented, uh, which could just be a keyboard mapping issue um, or you just cannot remember the password and in the previous video we looked at using host profiles in VMware vCenter server if you don't have access to host profiles or your vCenter server is not responding and you can't use it then this may be the method for you um, and this method actually requires us to completely restore or reinstall ESXi operating system on the host. So I'm just going to shut down, um, this has got a Windows 11 server on it. And I specifically chose Windows 11 server because it uses a VTPM. So I actually wanted to see how vCenter server um, and reinstalling the host operating system on the host uh, was going to cope um, with that. So I'm just going to uh, reboot, um, let's say reset root password. Let's just pretend that um, I'm in a VMware essentials environment. I don't have access to host profiles within my license. Um, so um, this happens to be a nested um, ESXi 8.02 host. Um, and again, I didn't catch that to restart it. So just these machines are just so fast these days. Okay, eventually. So we're just actually going to go through a completely normal ESXi operating system install. Uh, we're using um, 8.0.3, uh, the latest version, the latest ISO. Um, this is not an OEM custom image, so this is just a plain vanilla ISO that we've downloaded from Broadcom. And we're going to go through and install ESXi again on the host that currently has virtual machines installed. And there's one thing that we just need to be careful of and pay attention to. Um, the installation program will detect an existing installation of ESXi. We don't want to do an upgrade because all an upgrade is going to do is upgrade configuration that we already have there with the password that we don't know. We actually want to complete a new installation. When we complete a new installation, it will detect an existing VMFS data store. The existing VMFS data store is where your virtual machines are stored. Um, if you were connected to a SAN uh, and by installing ESXi again um, will overwrite the existing configuration that's present. So any networking that's present will be overwritten. Any data stores that connected NFS and iSCSI again will be overwritten. So um, you can use 
um, the PowerShell backup functions to actually back up the configuration of your ESXi servers. So should you need to recover them, you can, but bear in mind that that's also going to recover the password that you don't know. Um, so if you follow this method and then restore your configuration, you're going to restore the password that you don't know and lock yourselves out again. Um, so in reinstalling ESXi in this way, there is a little bit of work required um, afterwards to reconfigure your ESXi host um, as it was before. Um, so I'm just going to pause this uh, while we wait to be greeted by the installation screen. Okay, I'm going to continue. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit F11 to accept. Now this is where it's actually going to scan for available devices and it's going to pick up and it's going to find our um, ESXi installation. So I'm going to actually basically say we want to install it there. It's going to go off and scan that media and it's going to come back and turn around and go, here we go, I found ESXi, do you want to upgrade it? No, we don't want to upgrade it, we want to do a full installation. So I'm going to hit enter. So select the correct keyboard. Now enter a password and record it. So this is our new password. So effectively, we're now almost done, really, because we've reset the password on our SXI host. So I hit enter. Um, it's giving me a, the CPU on this host is not supported in future ESXi releases. Yes, I know that. Hit enter. Um, the installer is configured to install. This disk will be repartitioned, so I'm going to hit F11. It's partitioning the disk. Now, interestingly, that didn't mention that it had found a VMFS data store and did I want to preserve it or did I want to overwrite it? And I suspect that's because in this particular case, the partition or disk, 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 the logical disk or the physical disk that was being used was the second 120 gig disk, which is actually formatted as VMFS. Um, but no worries. So I'm going to hit enter and that's going to reboot our our server and you can actually see in the background here uh, that we've got our um, VMware vCenter server our ESXi host is currently not responding ESXi 003 so this is now booting it shouldn't take very long to boot uh, and then we'll log in um, then we'll specify the IP address uh, which was, and um, we'll specify the FQDN. I'm racking my brains here to remember the IP address, but I think it was 141.245.138.33, uh, which matches my um, host name. just put this on pause and uh, oh no we're there okay so it's picked up a different IP address from DHCP so we're going to change all that anyway um, so password hopefully remembered and gives us access um, and you would have seen this before in the other videos I've done on installing uh, 5 5.5 5 6 6.5 6.7 7 and 8 so we're going to configure the management network uh, IP address. We're going to use a static IP address. I'm going to use 138.33. Um, that's fine. My DNS is also fine, but I want to change that to ESXi003. And I want to use a custom of that. I'm going to restart all that. And I'm going to say yes. And that looks okay. Um, 
it's going to drop out of that session. I just want it to drop to um, a command prompt because I just wanted to basically just ping it. 141254138.33. Okay, that's responding. Let's just actually basically check that we can log in. Yeah, we'll join the customer improvement program. Okay, so obviously we've lost our licensing because we've overwritten the configuration of server. Um, there's a lot of VM kernels that are, are missing. Um, but one of the things I wanted to check is that can you see that the ESXi 003 underscore local underscore VMFS 6 partition data store is still present. And the trick not really that it's a trick as to how we get our virtual machines back, which is what people panic about um, when they've done a, an installation, um, provided they've not overwritten their VMFS data store. Uh, but at this point, people start to panic. Um, where is my virtual machine? Where is my virtual machine? And quite simply, all we're going to do um, is we're going to go to the data store browser. We're going to go to our Windows 11 folder and we're going to select the vmfx file and we're going to say register vm close and there's our windows 11 virtual machine now um has vcenter server yet actually picked this up so i'm going to basically just sort of kind of force a connection here and say connect and say OK. Um, it's complaining that the SSL certificate has changed, uh, which of course it has. Uh, I'm going to specify the root password. I'm going to accept the new SSL certificate. Uh, ESXi3, da, 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 that looks all right. Followed by next, followed by next, followed by finish. So we've got a bit of a red, we've got host requires. Okay, so that's all, all gone off quickly. Um, host is not, not, not really too worried about the, uh, the, the compliance, the profile. Quick stats is not up to date. That will get up to date. That just refresh when it's connected. I can say it's gone. Uh, the only other warning that we got there is about the, um, the, the host profile. Um, so, you know, we can detach that whole profile. We don't want that anymore. Um, it's actually now basically telling us that our Windows 11 is invalid and our Windows 10 is orphaned. Uh, it's interesting this because um, our Windows 11... Um, so you may have noticed that it says Windows 11 invalid and we had a virtual machine locked alarm uh, and it's telling me that encryption key data will be transmitted to unlock the VM on its registered host. Do you want to proceed? Yes, I want to proceed. And there's our Windows 11 host bank. And I'll power that on. So there you go. Um, a Windows 11 encrypted VM uh, using a native key provider on the cluster. Um, none of these hosts actually have a TPM in them. And... Windows 11 is actually basically running on a nested virtual ESXi server. And we've reinstalled the operating system. And we've been able to register that virtual machine with the host. Um, and we've basically managed to decrypt it and get it running again in a certain... I wasn't timing, um, but you know, certainly the video has been running for about 30 minutes. So in less than 13 minutes. Um, so again, I think um, is don't, don't panic. Um, just be cautious, just be careful, just be patient um, in what you're doing. Um, now, the other Windows 10 orphaned is because um, just really for completeness, um, we've got another uh, NAS data store here which is not currently presented to that host so i'm going to say mount to additional hosts 
Um, I'm a little bit dubious here about whether or not this is actually going to work um, or it's going to completely fail. Uh, that seems to have completed, actually. Um, so, again, if we actually basically have a little look, I'm wondering whether or not that, that Windows 10 orphaned um, VM um, was on that data store. And I did wonder whether or not it was just going to pop back up, come back. So I'm, Anyway, so I'm going to say remove from inventory. I'm not going to delete it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to browse that data store um, again. Browse files, Windows 10, and I'm going to register that VM on, on this host as well. And, and we're back in business. There's one final subtle thing that I've actually basically noticed is that um, our Windows 11 machines are not actually basically currently getting a virtual machine. And I know why that is there, because there is some special requirements that are required on an SDDSXI server uh, that I need to put back in terms of configuration. So there you go. Uh, how do we recover? How do we reset our ESXi host password? Um, using a reinstallation of ESXi OS. So, done in um, 15 minutes. Anyway, so thanks so much for watching these videos. There's one more method I'm going to try. Um, and it was a method that was, um, has been around and has been published for many, many years. Um, and that's where basically we take a, um, a Linux slash Unix um, live CD, we boot the operating system, um, we mount the partitions, uh, dev, SDA uh, 5 and SDA 6. Uh, we extract um, the state file. Uh, we then unzip the state file. We then look at the shadow file and we replace the shadow file root password with another password or we actually basically delete it so it's blank. Um, save, unmount, restart, and your ESXi server has got a um, blank password. However, in 7.03 and 8 and later, um, VMware have changed the mechanism where the root password is now stored. The root password is not stored in the shadow file anymore. Um, also, if you've got uh, TPM running on your host, um, the state tarball is now encrypted and it's encrypted with keys that are used um, in the TPM module. Um, if you don't have a TPM module, um, the keys are there, but you still can't decrypt um, the file. So that old method of using a live CD to boot your ESXi server and recover your password um, I'm afraid is no longer an option. So you've really got host profiles or reinstall um, the operating system. But for shits and giggles, I'm gonna have a little look at that. Um, and if it's worthy of actually basically turning into a video, um, but I think that really it's a, it's a dead end and I don't think it's worth exploring anymore. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, good night.